Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be covering section 12.4, Integrated Rate Laws. For our learning objections or objectives, first we're going to explain the form and function of the Integrated Rate Law. We're going to perform Integrated Rate Law cal calculations for zero first and second order reactions. We're going to define half-life and carry out related reactions. And we're going to identify the order of a reaction from concentration time data. The first question we have is what is an integrated rate law and why do we need that? So the integrated rate laws relate the concentration of reactants and time. So we've had our rate expressions that relate rate concentration and time. We have our rate laws that relate rate and concentration. And now we have integrated rate laws that are going to relate con reaction uh, concentration directly with time and we don't need to know the rate now. Um, these are some of our more useful reactions. They can be used to determine the amount of reactant or product present at a, after a period of time and they can be used to estimate the time required for a reaction to proceed to a certain extent. We're going to see that with our half-life calculations in a bit. Um, they're called integrated rate laws because they're derived using calculus and thusly they're integrated and that's this little squiggly symbol for those of you that are familiar with calculus. Let's start with our first order reaction. Uh, it's probably the trickier one because it does involve this exponential term here with a base of E. Um, and so we have the concentration at any given time here. We have the initial concentration that we started with here and then we have our reaction constant and time up here with the little negative symbol. Uh, for mathematical convenience, this equation can be rearranged into other formats. Okay, so we can have one with the natural log here, uh, and that's going to equal that guy right there, and then we can use our log rules to flip this ratio, and when we do that, we can clear that negative there. And from here, what we can actually do is use our log rules to derive this formula right here, which is particularly useful because of what we're going to have to do to determine the order of a reaction given an integrated rate law and time and concentration data. Um, basically, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make a plot in this case, we're going to have y be the natural log of the concentration at any given time, and we're going to have x be time, okay? The slope of this line is going to be negative k, and the y-intercept up here is going to be the natural log of the initial concentration. Now, if I have my data of time versus uh, the natural log of concentration, and I get a smooth line, with a high r squared value very close to one okay then i can say oh this is a first order reaction if i do this plot out and i do not get a straight line then i know that i do not have the correct order of the reaction and i'm going to have to make another plot uh, for like a second order or a zero order reaction if we had the second order it's uh, mathematically quite a bit simpler and making this into a line is a lot easier. Uh, we can see that y is just 1 over the concentration at any given time, b is going to be 1 over the initial concentration, and our x value is going to be t again, and the k value is going to be our slope. For a zero order, this is the simplest of all the equations. Uh, we just have the concentration at any given time, uh, is equal to negative kt plus the initial concentration that we started with. Uh, again, we can linearize that very simply here. And we're going to get uh, our concentration as y. We're going to see that the slope will be negative k this time and that our y-intercept is going to be the initial concentration. It is important when you're looking at these slopes to realize whether it is negative k or positive k depending on which one that we have. Okay, sometimes it's going to be negative k, sometimes it'll be positive k depending on the order of the reaction. So let's talk about half-lives. The half-life of a reaction is the time required for one half of a given amount of reactant to be consumed. 
If each succeeding, in each succeeding half-life, half of the remaining concentration of the reactant is consumed. So how long does it take for me to get half of the initial amount? How long does it take for me to get half of that? The equation for calculating half-life depends on the order of the reaction. So we're going to go through and derive these. But in the end, the only really important thing that you need to know is, to, is what the end result is for each order. Okay, so if we have the first order reaction here, we are going to start with this form here, and we're going to just solve that for t. Okay, our t one half, our half lifetime, is going to be the time uh, when this concentration is one half of the initial concentration. So we just make that substitution where uh, the concentration that we have at that time is going to be one half of the initial concentration. From here we can see that we can just cancel the initial concentration and we just wind up with the natural log of 2 which is where this number here comes from and our end value is just a number, the natural log of 2 right there as in a decimal divided by our reaction constant. For our second order, we're going to start off with the uh, same equation that I gave you before. Okay. Again, we're going to start solving that for time. So we're going to subtract this term to the other side. All right. We're going to make that substitution where we're now looking at t one half, and we make the substitution where our concentration at any given time is one half of the initial concentration. If we resolve this uh, fraction here, we get the 2 up top, and we get a common denominator between the two, okay? So now we can just combine that den uh, denominator there. We have 2 minus 1 is 1 there, so that works out very neatly. And now we just have to divide by k, and we have our equation for t 1 half. For the zero order, we have the concentration at any given time is going to equal negative kT plus the initial concentration. We can go right into that substitution because it's such a simple mathematical form where we're just substituting one half of the initial concentration here. Uh, we just need to subtract this term over and then clear our negative signs, okay? Or we could add it here and then subtract it here. You could think about it that way. Once we do that, we have the initial concentration minus one half of the initial concentration, which is one half of the initial concentration, okay? And that is equal to K times T one half. We divide over and we get that T one half is the initial concentration divided by two K. This is a really important resource for you guys. You can find this in the text too as well. And it's a really nice table where we're just getting a full summary of all of our different orders for the f zero order, the first order, and the second order. You can see the rate law. You can see the units you're going to have. You're going to see what the integrated rate law would be, what we need to plot in order to see if it fits a line, what the slope of all of these are going to be. Uh, and then what those half-life reactions are. So you really want to have this available to you when you're going through the homework and doing the quizzes.